will know our all I need for you hope for you hold my destiny come on sing it you alone are all I need in you alone in you alone I am complete let's sing that again you alone you alone you alone are all I need I don't know about you but I need him for you hold my destiny. Sing it to the King Church. You alone are all I need. In you alone, in you alone I am complete. Come on and sing it with me. Draw me, draw me, draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. I'm going to run after you, Jesus. Draw me. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. i come running after you. i come running. And I'll come running after you. You alone are all I need. Sing it with me. You alone are all I need. Sing it to the King, for you hold my destiny. You alone, you alone are all I need. In you alone I am complete. Come on and sing. Draw me, draw me, Lord. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. I'm going to run after you, Jesus. I'm going to run. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. And I come running, I come running, and I come running after you. I'm gonna run after you, Jesus. I'm gonna run, and I come running. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, on this New Year morning, we join our faith with your wonderful people. The dawn of a new day, a new year minister to your people encourage them get them ready God get them ready for 2022 minister to them help us all to have our priorities in the right place and help us to regain our focus and look to the hills from whence cometh our help because our help comes from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth he will not suffer our foot to be moved, but he that keepeth us, he doesn't slumber nor sleep. Help us to regain our focus on Jesus. That closeness, that nearness. Sometimes we go through so much heartache and pain and difficulties and trials and tribulations that we lose that tenderness towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear God, touch us. Visit your people this morning. Stir up that love towards you. Refresh us, God, and help us all to regain our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray somebody say amen. From me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, to all of you, Happy New Year. Welcome into 2022. Wow. The old people would say, through many trials, toils, and snares, we have already come. Thank God we crossed over. We made it into 2022. And right at the opening of this year, we want to declare this word over your life. Regaining your focus on Jesus. 
regaining your focus on him. Listen, and I, I got to say it because we got to be examples to you. Several times throughout every year, the Holy Spirit would have to check me and say, hey, pay attention. You need to focus on Jesus. There's ministry work to do. There's, you got to build a bigger team. There's a lot of things you're focusing on. Folks in your family getting sick. You yourself getting sick. You're having doctor's visits. There's all kind of things going on. You're still in the midst of a pandemic. And sometimes through it all, we lose our focus. We lose that that sensitivity of spending time with him and drawing close to him. And our minds sometimes are on the wrong things. We can be so caught up in the negative that's happening that we can forget about who Jesus is right now. Are you listening to me? And that's why we are talking about this, regaining your focus on Jesus. And I, I want to read something to you from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 20. And then I want to take you into the book of Luke, chapter 24, 13, talking about the men on the road to, to a miss. But I want to read this to you out of John 20 and 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. They saw, the, they saw the nail where the nail prints were, and they saw where the spear was shoved in his side. Because he had risen from the dead. I want you to pay attention to this sentence I'm about to read. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Glory to God. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Because their last, the last sight of him, he was bruised up, busted up, beat up, bloodied up. They were so stuck on what had happened, the negative, the bad that had happened. They were so focused on the bad that they were stressed out. I mean, I would have been stressed out. If, if you know your mentor, your leader, the one who was with you, who was training you and discipling you, he was the closest person to you, died and you saw him bust up and bruised up and bloodied up hanging from a cross, that was their last sight of him. Do you see how trials and do you see how traumatized these disciples must have been? But all of a sudden, when the doors were shut, glory to God, the resurrected Jesus Christ walked through the walls. <laughs> My God, that shouting news right there. And why did he walk through the walls and showed up to them? And he, say, and he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. He had to help them regain their focus. They were so stuck on what had happened that they had forgotten Jesus is alive. He appeared to them to, to, just, to just knock them out of all of the bad they had seen taking place with him on Calvary Cross. He's standing in the front of them. Look at me, I'm king of kings. Look at me, I'm Lord of lords. There's no more pain for me, no more dying. And he even ate in their presence. He asked him to give him a piece of bread and some food, and he ate with them. The Bible says, And I'm telling you, we can get distracted with the cares of this life and everything happening and we can lose sight of Jesus and we need to refocus on him because look at what happens when we refocus on him. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. He showed up to help them regain their focus and they were glad and every time I get out of that busyness and get plugged back in and get my eyes on Jesus. There's a joy. There's a peace. There's a comfort. There's a contentment that comes with your eyes being focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of you are so focused about what's next? What's the future holding for me? Who am I going to marry? What house do I need? Some of, some, what next job? And, and some of this stuff is, these are genuine needs. 
How am I going to meet ends meet? I lose my job, this, that, the next. We can be so taken up with it all that we need a visitation from the Lord to help us regain our focus. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. I want to take you into the book of Luke chapter 24. Watch this, verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, that's seven miles. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Watch where they're, watch where they're stuck in this conversation. And it came to pass that whilst these two men walked and they communing and reasoning with one another, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. They didn't even recognize him. He disguised himself in the Lord. It wasn't time for him to show them who he was. But their eyes were withholden that they should not know him. Now, I want you to see where their conversation was. Their conversation wasn't all that bad. Watch this. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that you are having one to another? What's this conversation about as you walk? And, and you are sad. They're sad because the last sight of their Messiah, their Savior, their Lord, their King, he was bleeding from every part of his body. His face was deformed. He was bruised up and bloodied up. And come on. And he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? All of this was going through their mind. And Jesus appeared to them, the resurrected Christ. And he, they didn't recognize him. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Are you new around here? And has not known the things which are come to pass in, in these days? And he said unto them, What things? <laughs> It's amazing. The Lord himself, he loves his people so much. He cares about us so much that even in the midst of us talking, he just, whew, his presence, he just slides right in this. Many times me and my wife are discussing scripture and the, the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the, the presence of the Lord just shows up. Watch this. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto, unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests, look at where their focus is, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. They, they are so consumed with what had happened. And I mean, you would have too. I mean, these men are human beings. They're not supermen. I mean, you know how long it takes to get over some grief? Listen to what they said. But we trusted, we thought that it had been he which, which should have redeemed Israel. We thought he was coming as a conquering king and we, he was going to overthrow the Romans and we were going to rule and reign. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. They didn't realize Jesus was risen from the dead. Wow. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. They went to his grave, and when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it, even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? I just love how he makes them face reality. You know, we only want to pick the good parts of the Bible. But there's some tough parts in the Bible. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. We don't like those kind of scriptures, right? Watch this. 
and beginning at Moses, he's taken them He's taking them through the word of God. The living word is taking them through the written word. My God, I, I wish I was on that road to a mess. Thank God we can be a part of that conversation and have a glimpse through the pages of the Bible. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This Bible is about Jesus Christ the son of the living God, the Messiah, the savior of the world, the king of the Jews. And they drew nigh unto the village. Do, do you see that? He took them into the word. Listen, and this is how you know you're getting your focus right. You get back into your word. You begin to press in. You begin to seek his face with everything in you. You begin to spend time with him. You are listening to his word right now. Watch this. And they drew nigh unto the village whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But he's teaching them the word. He's teaching them the word. He's expounding it. He's helping them to comprehend it. He's helping them to understand it. He's making it so simple that even a child could understand it. When Jesus came, he took them to the Bible. He took them through the written word. He's quoting it to them. My God, my God, my God, my God. If Jesus himself preached the word, who do we think we are to not be men of the word of God and preach the word of God? You can't preach what you want to. We got to get people back into the word of God. So he acted as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him saying, abide with us. They said, mm, there's something about you. We want you to hang with us. They said, come, st stay with us, spend the night with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. I love this. And it came to pass. As he sat at meat with them. He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And then he gave it to them. And their eyes were open. And they knew him. And he vanished. Out of their sight. He was there. And then he wasn't. And they said one to another, glory to God, did not our heart burn within us whilst he talked with us by the way and whilst he opened unto us the scriptures? The word is precious. He preached the word to them like nobody else could. They said our hearts were a flame, our hearts were burning whilst he was talking to us. We knew there was something about him, but our eyes were withholding that we should not see him. But when he gave it, when he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it, we recognized this is the Messiah, this is the Savior. And phew, he vanished out of their sight. Lord have mercy. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. They were glad. They had gotten their focus back on Jesus. They got their focus back. They were so consumed with all the bad that had happened. And who wouldn't be consumed if something like, if, the, if you'd seen your Savior, your Messiah, your mentor, your pastor, your leader, crucified on a cross. That's enough to consume anyone's thoughts. But Jesus showed up to help them regain their focus on who he is now. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. No more dying. No more going back into the grave. No more going back to the cross. I'm the king of all kings. And to think that the king of all kings will come down and spend time with us. What a mighty God. He's calling us to regain our focus. And I love that John chapter 20, verse 20, and the disciples, give him glory, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They were glad. They were glad. Give him glory. Give him Glory, sing it with me this morning. God's gonna get the glory out of this. 
Come on, sing, sing it with me. Just give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. God's going to get it. God's going to get the glory out of this. Come on, sing it one more time. Just give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. God's going to get the glory out of this. Father God, on this New Year's morning, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with your wonderful people. And dear God, we ask you to remove all of the distractions, everything that's drawing their attention away from the Lord Jesus, that's drawing their attention away from the Word of God, that's drawing their attention away from prayer and time spent with the King of Kings and the Lord of all Lords. Remove every hindrance, remove every distraction, and by the Holy Spirit of God, draw them and help them to regain their focus on the Lord Jesus. Because the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. When we get our eyes back on you, there's a joy. There's a peace. There's a comfort that, that comes with that Lord. Visit your people through this broadcast this morning. Minister to them and encourage them. Let them know you are right there. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to do so. You can visit us online at seanpender.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pender Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpender.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give by texting. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888, and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. And again, from me and my lovely wife and family, to all of you, Happy New Year. Welcome into 2022. Let's believe God that this will be the greatest, the greatest year of our entire life. We have to believe him. Let's use our faith. I know we're in a pandemic, but let's use our faith. He is faithful. Me and Pastor Amy love all of you so much. We appreciate you, and we look forward to being with you again on tomorrow for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. We love you. Happy New Year.